Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Institute. And I just realized that we did not talk about the six principle of integrative approach to kidney health and kidney disease. And this is the use of pharmaceuticals in kidney health. And uh, really a lot of people, when they think about an integrative approach to kidney health, they think we're talking about a holistic approach with just the use of lifestyle and supplements and all that. But there are there is a significant role for pharmaceutical use in kidney health and kidney disease. And here we're going to talk about what we need to do and what we need to be aware of when we use pharmaceuticals and, and medications in the management of chronic kidney disease and kidney patients. So before we do this, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the subscribe button below and follow us for more videos. I know we have not been consistently producing videos every two weeks, but we're trying to come up with videos to help you with the understanding of the integrative approach to kidney health as much as we can with our tight schedule uh, around patient care. So let's do this. So again, when we talk about pharmaceuticals and kidney health, we realize that on average, every kidney patient takes nine medications. So that is a significant amount of medication that they use. Some of the medications are medications to treat side effects of other medications. So what we advocate for here at the Integrative Kidney Institute is that we need to use the least amount of medications. So you do all these other steps and you coach the patient through lifestyle modification plans. And then when medications are needed, you use the medications. And we need to realize that also some of the medication we can use can cause kidney disease. And we need to pay attention to their doses and to drug-to-drug -drug interaction and also drug-nutrient interactions. So when you think about the long list of medications, it's too long to even go through. There are medications that can cause kidney injury. So some of them can lead to decreased circulation to the kidneys. Some of them can cause vascular damage in the kidneys. And some of them can lead to inflammation and autoimmune acute glomerulonephritis. Some of them like hydralazine, for example, is well known to cause vasculitis or inflammation in the blood vessels in the kidneys. And uh, <clears throat> some medication can cause uh, acute interstitial nephritis. This can be related to some genetic predisposition and uh, the use of medications. And some medication can just cause acute tubular injury. And there are some medications that can also cause blockage of the urine outflow. They can cause crystal formation and lead to blockage and what we call post-renal uh, disease. Pay attention to Bactrim. Bactrim is really one of those most horrible medication to use in um, kidney patients. And it's used commonly for any UTI or any procedure. It's commonly used. And I want to make sure that people are aware that Bactrim should not be used, especially in advanced cases of kidney disease. So, and then we have to pay attention to the doses because as kidney disease progresses, a lot of these medications are excreted by the kidneys and we have to adjust the doses accordingly. There are a lot of guidelines of, uh, for medication changes, what formula to use. A lot of pharmaceuticals uh, company uses the old fashioned Cockroft gold formula, which estimate creatinine clearance, which pay attention. The reason here I think is because it included tubular excretion of some medications, but it's not really clear which formula you should use for adjusting the medication. So for us physicians, we use the CKD EPI formula to estimate kidney function. Um, but many pharmacists, they use the Cockcroft Gold formula. At any rate, these formulas have minor differences between them. But if you're in doubt, you can always plug in your medication and look out the uh, look the, the doses. And here's one of the websites that I use uh, 
often, and there's many apps available for you. Uh, some medications, I've seen so many side effects of medication that have been used for at higher doses in advanced kidney disease that can lead to accumulation, neurotoxicity, and other toxicities. So pay attention to that. Really, really super important. And then, of course, this is something we have to pay attention to is the interaction between drugs. And that is something that should always be a, a no-brainer for any practitioner. For example, you know, you can, if you use amlodipine and simvastatin, for example, you increase the risk of patient getting rhabdomyolysis or muscle breakdown, and that can cause kidney damage by itself. So there is also a website that you can use and check for interactions between drugs and, and drugs. Pay attention, especially to transplant medication. Many of those transplant medication interact with so many medications that can raise their levels and cause damage to the kidneys and other damages. And, and finally, I want to stop here and mention the drug nutrient interaction or what we call DIND. I specifically came up with KDIND because many of the kidney disease medications can lead to nutritional deficiencies. And I listed a few of them here for you, uh, but pay attention to beta blockers and their effect on melatonin and their need to have more adequate stores of CoQ10 to work properly and not cause any cardiac suppression or cardiac uh, malfunction. Pay attention to ACE inhibitors and interaction with zinc. And of course, we all know about CoQ10, which I think is, is, is really an essential supplement for patients with kidney disease in general. So um, there are many books written about this. This is one of my references that I use and, and go back to often to see if the medication has any drug nutrient interactions. Also, this book also can give you, and I, I don't have any affiliation with this book, but it gives you a lot of idea about drug interaction with some supplements if you're using supplement for the patient. So of course, do not change your medications without checking with your provider. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to press the subscribe button and the like button and follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram at Integrative Kidney and on our website, www.inkidney.com.